Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here. So today I'm going to be filming the next in my bookshelf tours and today we have the blue and green shelf and I'm going to talk to you about what books I have and um, a little bit about them. So let's get started. So before we get started, I have two little pop, what are they called? Pop vinyls? Vinyl? Funko Pops um, on this shelf. I have Harry and Ron, um, both in their normal school uniform. Um, I believe these are the first two on this, um, on the Funko Pops. And I really like them. I got, uh, Harry was a present from, I want to say my sister for Christmas, I think. And then Ron was a present from my boyfriend for my birthday last year, I think. Uh, I just need to mine now so then I can have the full set of them. So they are on this shelf because I did originally have the Ron one on the orangey red shelf. Um, but it looked a bit strange because it kept blending in with the book, so... And then I thought, actually, I'll have them in the middle because I really like that. So I'm going to start with this pile over here. So the first book we have is The Sixth Target by James Patterson, which is part of the Women's Murder Club series. Obviously, this is book number six, hence why it's six on it. Um, and I um, am going to reread. I'm going to actually read the whole series. So this obviously will come soon. Next up I have Grave Doubts uh, by Meg Cabot which is one of the mediator books. This is number five in the series um, and uh, yeah I haven't read any of the series yet. I mentioned in my pink books that I had the first one down there and I think some of the others I've had as well so I'm going to read this series. I do own pretty much all the books I think so at some point I'll read them. Then I have Young Blood by Meg Cabot and this is actually the fourth in the series of The Mediator. Then we have The Versions of Us by Laura Barnett which I've heard some things about on booktube. Um, I've heard quite good things about it. Um, I believe this is a um, time travel type thing um, and it literally says on the back Eva and Jim are 19 and students at Cambridge when their paths first cross in 1958. Jim is walking along a lane when a woman approaching him on a bicycle swerves to avoid a dog. What happens next will determine the rest of their lives. And I think it's about like moments in time and things changing and depending on what you said, if you said yes or no. Um, and I'm really excited to read this one because um, it sounds a bit like Life After Life by Kate Atkinson um, and yeah I really want to read that one too so this is on my list. Then we have The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman and I mentioned in a previous video that I've never ever read a Neil Gaiman book and I certainly need to do that. Um, the Graveyard Book I believe is about a young boy named Boo? No, Bod. Um, and he lives in a grave and it's about the kind of spirits that look after him and things and um, yeah, um, I've heard lots of good things about this. Obviously Neil Gaiman is kind of one of those icons that everybody has read, so I definitely need to get on with that. Then we have Baby Doll by Holly Overton, and I um, heard about this, I think, on um, the live chat between, was it, is it Peruse, a Peruse Utopia? Uh, it's between a book utopia and a peruse project and they i'm sure they did a live show on this book i'll try and link it below if i can find it um and it follows it's basically about a girl who's been like locked up and cap kept captive since she was 16 and um then she her captor leaves the door open and she escapes and then i don't really know what happens after that obviously that's kind of the point of the book but i'm excited to read this it sounds like a thriller type thing and that's my favorite then we have the miniaturist by jesse burton um, which I believe has something to do with the doll's house and everything that happens to the people in the doll's house happens to them in real life and um, I don't really know but I'm interested again. Um, I think this kind of sounds like a creepy book and uh, yeah I want to get to it. Then I have this massive book um, which I bought um, on somebody's recommendation and I can't now think about who that was. It was a booktuber talked about this and this is I Know This Much Is True by Wally Lamb and I believe this is about a boy who has an autistic brother and his brother does something and then, oh no sorry, it's not autistic, he's a paranoid schizophrenic and something happens and they then he then has to protect his brother and like I said this is a massive book, I believe it is nearly 900 pages long so I will get this um, read at some point but it's kind of intimidating me right now. <laughs> then I have Mr Mercedes by Stephen King, as you all know I love Stephen King and I'm planning on reading all of his books, um, kind of as and when I can. And this is the first of one of his series. He doesn't do many series, but this is um, his first, I think it's like a three part series. My mum's read this, um, she borrowed this one from me and she said it was really good. Um, so yeah, I don't know much about it, but she said it was really good and I would really like it. So I'm going to hopefully 
and pick that up in my Stephen King reads. Then I have White Teeth by Zadie Smith. Um, I will link my library haul recently where I talked about the fact that I had NW by Zadie Smith out from the library and I think it's good because all of her books pretty much have um, very colourful covers. I think like Swing, is it Swing Time has like a bright yellow cover. Um, I don't really know anything about this. What does it say? Uh, one of the most talked about fictional debuts of recent years. Oh, this is her debut. I didn't realise. Um, White Teeth is a funny, generous, big-hearted novel adored by critics and readers alike, dealing, among many other things, with friendship, love, war, three cultures and three families over three generations, one brown mouse and the tricky way the past has of coming back and biting you on the ankle. It is a life-affirming, riotous must-read of a book. And, like I said, I've heard amazing things about um, Zadie Smith's writing, so I really need to get to this. Um, and hopefully I'll also read NW soon as well, so I'll be able to compare the two. Now we're on to the middle section. So the next one I have is another Stephen King book, and this is a massive um, hard copy. And this is Lisey's Story by Stephen King, which I don't really know much about this one either. I believe it's about um, a woman trying to face her husband's demons after he's died. Um, like I said, I don't know too much about it. I actually had a paperback version of this book from the that I bought from a charity shop and then my mum came around one day and was like oh I bought you a present um, and she gave me this copy and it's hardback and it's beautiful and she said oh okay I didn't realise you already had it and um, so she took the paperback copy because she likes Stephen King as well and gave me this lovely hardback which I adore so um, yeah I'm looking forward to reading this. Again, I think this is quite a big book. Uh, I think it's about 600 pages. And I do love Stephen King's longer books because I feel like he can he really gets to grips with like details and things. So this I'm quite excited to read. Um, I don't feel like it's going to happen soon because I have so many other Stephen King books to get to first. But I definitely at least have this one now so I can talk about it and read it when, when I get to it. Next up is Allegiant by Veronica Roth, which is the final book in the Divergent trilogy. I've read Divergent, I need to read Insurgent, which I do own, and then I can obviously get onto this. This is a lovely hardback edition of Allegiant. I believe I got this from the library, but again, I've not actually seen this cover very much. I think there's another cover that people tend to have, um, but I really like this cover, and I'm looking forward to it because I did really enjoy Divergent. Next up, I have Jodie Picoult's Handle With Care. As I've mentioned many times before, you know how much I love Jodie Picoult's books, so... Um, this is another interesting one and I always feel like she hit, handles hard hitting topics really really well. So this one is, um, it says Willow O'Keefe had seven broken bones before she took her first breath. Now her life is lived on a knife edge. Born with brittle bone disease she will never learn to skate like her sister. Even walking can be dangerous. One wrong step and she's back in a cast. The medical bills are crippling her family, so when a lawyer tells Charlotte, her mother, that they might have a case to sue for wrongful birth, she feels bound to consider it, except that winning would mean losing her best friend and telling the world that she wish wishes her much longed for adored daughter had never been born. And so this is a, again, another hard hitting topic. It's a topic that is very difficult to talk about and yet Jodie Picoult does it so well, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. Then I have My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Waga, which I believe has something to do with um, suicide, like a suicide pact. I don't know too much about this. I've heard mixed things about this book. Um, a lot of people have issues with this book and think it's like glorifying suicide in the same way that I think 13 Reasons Why does. Um, so I will read this at some point and kind of figure out how I feel about it, but I'm going into it very tentatively. The next one is Local Girl Missing by Claire Douglas, and this is about a woman who's, um, so this is about a 21 year old girl, who go, a woman who goes missing one night, and then, um, her best friend, um, hears that a body has been found in the village where they, in the town that they used to live in and um, it's kind of all drawn back into it. I don't know obviously if the body is the woman's or not or whatever but um, I like I said love thrillers I find the whole thing like terrifying but interesting and I really can't wait to read this. I've heard really good things about Claire Douglas's writing I think she wrote a book called The Sisters which I haven't read but again I've heard good things about so hopefully I really like this one as well and it's supposed to have a really good twist in it as well. Then I have a book called Hitler's Angel by William Osborne and I've really not heard very much about this apart from obviously it's set in the Second World War and it's about um, a boy and a girl trying to find somebody to bring Hitler down and um, yeah this could be really interesting. Um, this is another book that I got from a library book sale and uh, I'm kind of scared to read it, I won't lie. 
Um, I always find that second world war books are either amazing or they're not. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is a good one. Then I have another second world war book and this is The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas by John Boyne. I have seen the major motion picture, as it does up here, um, of this book and I sobbed like a small child when reading it because um, it was very sad. This is a lot smaller book than I thought it was going to be but I'm interested to see how it stands up to the book because how it stands up to the film because I really liked the film like I said and um, either way I think this is a good story. Then I have Gravity by Tess Gerritsen and I love Tess Gerritsen's Rosalian Isles book series. I've never seen the TV show but I did like the, um, I've read some of the books and loved them. This is I believe a standalone which I know has had a lot of controversy because I believe there was a um, film made that starred like Anne Hathaway in it who and, and the film idea of it, it was called Gravity and the film was very close to the plot of this book and I believe that Tess Gerritsen um, took them to court um, over the fact that like over copyright or like plagiarism or something, I'm not 100% sure, I don't even know what actually happened to the story in the end, but I know there's been some con controversy. Um, but like I said, I love Tess Gerritsen, I'm really excited to read a standalone book of hers. This is set in space and I'm not sure too much about it, but I'm really excited to read it. I love reading about space as well, so this could be a definite tick on my list. Then I have a book called Daughter by Jane Shemilt and this is about a woman whose daughter goes missing and um, she is trying to find her and a year later she's still missing. Um, I feel like this could be quite similar to The Missing by C.L. Taylor that I read I think last year and really liked so um, I love this and also again it's another thriller so I'm going to like it probably um, and if not I'm just going to really enjoy the process of reading it. I then have Second Honeymoon by James Patterson and Howard Ruffin and I read Honeymoon, uh, the first book in this duology last year and it was okay, I liked it. Um, I don't remember too much about it other than it's by, it's about an FBI agent who in the first one was really obsessed with this woman who was like murdering people and um, I'm interested to see kind of where it goes, whether this woman is still in this or whether it's a completely different story based on the FBI agent. So yeah, looking forward to this. Um, like I said, I really liked the first one. Then I have Undead and Unappreciated by Mary Janice Davidson, and this is the third book in the Undead series. I read Undead and Unwed and Undead and Unemployed last year and liked both of them a lot. So um, hopefully I really enjoy this. It follows a woman named Betsy Taylor who has turned into a vampire and she's suddenly like the queen of the undead and she doesn't fully know why that is. Um, and yeah, she's just trying to get on with it. So loved the first two, so hopefully I like this one as well. Then we have a book called Shatter Me by Tahira Mathi, which I'm sure most of you have heard of before. Um, Whitney from Witty Novels, whose, link, whose channel I'll link below, um, is like in love with this series. It's her favourite series of all time. Um, and also Naya Reads and Smiles, I'll link her channel below as well. She talks about this a lot too. This is about a woman named Juliet, I believe, whose touch is fatal and then some people try and use it as a weapon, I think, and um, yeah, it's about that. I think they there was three three books in the original series, but I think the fourth one has just been released. I'm not sure if it's linked to that or if it's like a spin-off. Um, I don't know how I feel about this because throughout the book, now I can't find, oh yeah, there's like bits with like crossing out um, throughout it, so not sure how I feel about that. We'll see. And then we are on to the kind of green side, the final stack. So the first one on that sack is Black Box by Cassia Leo and I will quickly read this to you because I don't have a clue what this is about. It says, never forget that in an instant your entire world can go black. Mickey and Crush have crossed paths twice. They've saved each other's lives even if they have no idea how much they have to thank each other for. Both of them have a history to hide from and when their paths cross yet again they are forced to confront the secrets that might just bring them together for good. As they begin to piece together their history they soon realise that fate has more in store for them than just another love story. Three fateful encounters, two heartbreaking tragedies, one last chance to get it right. Again, I don't know anything else about this. It looked interesting. I think I bought this from a charity shop. It looked really interesting. I thought I'd pick it up and see what it was about. So I will let you know once I read it. The next one is The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty and um, this is another thriller, again, another one that I'm really excited about, but this follows a woman whose husband dies and when going through his stuff she finds a letter that says, only to be opened on my death, and um, when she reads the letter she finds out this massive secret that he's been keeping about something that he did, I believe, it confesses to something, and she then is kind of dis 
having to decide between keeping the secret to herself in which it will kind of like sit with her and worm kind of through her uh, or telling the secret and hurting those that she loves the most so again I have no idea what the secret is but I'm really really looking forward to finding out and I've heard this book is really difficult to put down like once you start it you want to finish it so that sounds like my kind of read. We then have Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter and this will be my first Karen Slaughter book um, unless I read something else before but I doubt it. Um, I love crime books like this is my favourite type of book. Crime books and thriller books are just my thing and um, I don't really know too much about this. I think this is about a girl who goes missing and they're trying to find the killer basically and I've heard amazing things about Karen Slaughter and I um, just really want to read something from her and um, this is the one I had so yeah I've heard it's kind of a bit um, difficult to read like it's very kind of um, grip gripping but also kind of like a difficult subject I think is what I'm trying to say because there's a big like just shocking discovery in it um, and yeah I really can't wait for this like I said I love crime so this is one of my kind of favorite types of books to read. I then have Detective Cross by James Patterson and this is a bookshop so it's like one of the really small like small short stories um, I think this is literally how many pages is this like 120, 130 and um, this is part of the Alex Cross series which as you may know I really enjoy that series by James Patterson and I am rereading that series um, from the very beginning because I've kind of read a few here and there but not the whole thing um, so yeah hopefully I'll like this one this is about an anonymous caller threatening bomb hoaxes basically so yeah definitely wanting to get to this one at some point and I don't think it will take me very long because it's literally the shortest book in the world. I then have Inferno by Dan Brown this is um, I think the fourth book yeah this is the fourth book in the um, well, what's the like Robert Langdon series is it um, it follows the he's a Harvard symbologist and um, it's the same series as the Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons and actually um, if you watched my library haul recently which I'll link below um, I talked about the fact that I got Angels and Demons out of the library so that I could start the series again so that I could actually get to this one um, I think I might have seen the film of this I think I have but it won't take away from it because the books are so well written um, and I find it really really fascinating the whole symbols thing and yeah I really wanted to read this um, so I'm going to read the others first and then hopefully get to this soon. Then we have Best Friends by Jacqueline Wilson and I love Jacqueline Wilson um, some of her books have been my favourite in my growing up and again in that library hall I was talking about the fact that I'd got Tracy Beaker out of the library and so um, I remember really liking this one I have not read this in years and years but I do remember reading this um, and it's about two best friends Gemma and Alice and kind of what they mean to each other and um, yeah I just love the, the illustrations on them too and um, yeah I really just want to reread all of Jacqueline Wilson books because they really meant a lot to me in my childhood and they were a big part of my reading and kind of getting into reading in the first place. Then I have How to Be a Woman by Catelyn Moran. I think I heard about this on Just Kiss a Frog? Just Kiss My Frog I think it's called. Um, uh, the channel, YouTube channel with Lena Norms is the main that she's the one who does the channel um, and so I'll link her channel below if I can find it. I'm pretty sure I remember her talking about this book and that's why I picked it up but um, Catelyn Moran in general is quite funny. This is like a part memoir, I think she describes it as part memoir, part rant. Catelyn Moran answers the questions that every modern woman is asking. Um, so yeah definitely gonna read this. I think this is gonna be really funny. I've heard that she's a really funny person so this would probably be quite a funny book to read. Then I have another thriller. That's surprising isn't it? It's not like I've had like 10 million of them on this shelf. Um, this is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh um, and I think this could be quite interesting. So this um, very quickly follows um, in a split second Jenna Gray's world descends into a nightmare. Her only hope of moving on is to walk away from everything she knows to start afresh. Desperate to escape Jenna moves to a remote cottage on the Welsh coast but she's haunted by her fears, her grief and her memories of a cruel November night that changed her life forever. Slowly Jenna begins to glimpse the potential for happiness in her future but her past is about to catch up with her and the consequences will be devastating. And this says, did you love Gone Girl and the Girl on the Train? Now lose yourself in the twisty enthralling psychological thriller that everyone is talking about. And I have heard a lot of people talking about this. Um, I did love Gone Girl and I did love a girl on the train so hopefully I really like this one too um, and yeah 
I'm looking forward to it. We then have Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton, which is a YA fantasy set in the desert, I do believe. Um, yes, it is. I don't know very much about it. I love the cover of this. I think it's gorgeous. Like I said, lots of people talk about this. It's one of, like, the books of the time. And, um, yeah, looking forward to reading this. Then I have Uglies by Scott Westerfeld, which is the first um, book in a three-part uh, trilogy, which I believe I have all of the books of. You'll probably see them coming up in next shelves and things. Um, this follows a dystopian world where everybody is ugly and then when you turn to a certain age you become a pretty and the main character in this has to decide whether to turn her friend in or become a pretty um, and she has that kind of dilemma. Um, I, again, I'm looking forward to this. I've heard very mixed things but um, I feel like I love a dystopian so I'm probably going to really like this. And then the final book on this shelf and the final book of this, I made me jump, the books just fell down. And the final book of this video is The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis, which is the sixth and final book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. I have seen the adaptation of this, but I've never actually read this book before, and um, I really feel like it should be interesting. Like I said, I've seen the adaptation it was a long, long time ago, and I really don't remember the storyline, so this could be quite an interesting book to read, um, because I do like the, the Narnia series. Um, I do plan on reading The Horse and His Boy really soon, so hopefully this will kind of follow that up at some point. Um, but yeah, really like this Chronicles of Narnia in general. So that is all of the books on my blue and green shelf. Let me know which books you think I should get to first and give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and press the little notification bell so that you don't miss out when I talk about the other books on my shelf. I'll also link the playlist below where I have done the other bookshelf tours um, previously and I shall see you in my next video. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.